Antonetti, il mondo. Oliver Kolova, my Citadel Pandora LMPVP Association. A New Kind of Science is a book by Stephen Wolfram published 20 years ago. The thesis of the book is twofold. The nature of computation must be explored experimentally and the results of these experiments have great relevance to understanding the physical world. Did this book help you understand the physical world better? Yes. Do you know that the metro station Alsanalia in Kiev is the deepest metro station in the world at 105.5 meters? Yes. Cradle of Filth are an English metal band formed in Suffolk in 1991. The band's musical style evolved originally from black metal to a cleaner and more produced amalgam of gothic metal, symphonic metal and other metal genres. Is this the best way to decharge after a long working day? Yes. Bram Stoker's Dracula is an American gothic horror movie directed and produced by Francis Ford Coppola. Do you know that Johnny Depp originally was Coppola's first choice for the role of Jonathan Harker instead of Keanu Reeves? No. Is it ethical to work for a blockchain under the control of a centralized development team? Mm. No. I prefer my horilka distilled from wheat over potatoes. No. Artificial intelligence becomes conscious and self-aware in the next decades. Yes. Will everything run directly or indirectly on the Bitcoin blockchain in the future? No. Do you know that mature Japanese oysters, also known as Miyagi oysters, can grow up to 40 centimeters? No. Are you Satoshi Nakamoto? No. Welcome to the Connected World Weekly Podcast. I'm Edward. And I'm Steph. We are ready to take you with us into the beautiful world of the Lightning Network. Enjoy, Enjoy the, the ride. ride. This is episode 31 of Connected World, of course. Steph, how are you doing? <laughs> I'm fine, Edward. <laughs> Did you forget? Yeah, well, more than fine, right? <laughs> oh, why, why is that? Uh, I think you checked your email or, or Telegram or, or Twitter or I don't know. Ah, <laughs> Tell me. You mean the, the Bitcoin 2022 <laughs> yeah. in my neighborhood, <laughs> in, my, in my back garden, right? <laughs> Indeed. Oh, man, yeah. this is just amazing. And it's an amazing place. I've uh, went there uh, a couple of times and you yeah, also for beautiful. some music. Yeah, because I, what, I, I, what did you oh, see I, there? I visited it uh, for a couple of times, uh, I think maybe 20 plus or something. Uh, festivals awesome. um, uh, all the time, uh, techno music, uh, yeah. Awakenings, it's, it's the home base of Awakenings. So the, I think it's Awakenings is the, yeah, the biggest, fest uh, biggest techno festival, uh, well, of the world, I guess. Yeah, I think I can <laughs> say that, of the world. So um, yeah, man, so, it, 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 and I have to say <laughs> these are, Completely different parties, of course, because uh, <laughs> of well, course, yeah, no, no, and, no, no uh, time to talk uh, when, when the music things. is playing. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you have some history it. there. Well, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I hope that oh, I hope they it. let me in. <laughs> <laughs> no, but but seriously, and, the, the the venue it's it's beautiful, man, and it's it's like a, a big silo. Yeah. And um, I think it's if you've never this visited world, it, it, it looks yeah. very uh, industrial. Uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, indeed. Yeah, very yeah. industrial, and it's uh, quite big. I think it's it's not not as big as as uh, Miami, of course. But uh, no, of course. But I think they're aiming yeah. for like five thousand people, maybe, because in the West yeah, so. itself, they can put in I think three and a half thousand uh, people. So yeah, and then uh, maybe but the it, it is a whole terrain. Right? So perhaps mm -hmm. they're uh, organizing uh, some other things too. I I don't know. And yeah, you, three days long, they're gonna sell mm -hmm. orange pills. <laughs> no, oh, really, it's, orange um, pills and it's, uh, it's great. <laughs> and the Westergaardsbrug, yeah. No, no, yeah. no. But yeah, we indeed. have to we have to be professional, Edward. I mean, uh, of course. Uh, I think uh, for Europe, for uh, the Netherlands, this is just amazing. For us, of course, also uh, for being Dutch. But um, but I think it's very important. Mm -hmm. And even in these times. 
uh yeah well for for europe this is great and yeah. uh and i, I think, hope uh, i hope that um if they uh if, if, if bitcoin magazine is listening also um please yeah. guys let let the guys of monumental um organize the the after party then the guys behind uh, <laughs> awakenings uh please let them because they know the venue oh, that uh, would be great. like yeah. it's their own so uh, yeah man uh, that would be great <laughs> <laughs> Well, they're uh, they're they're listening. I just know it. <laughs> <laughs> and um, who do we have this uh, week? Because uh, we have uh, also a very interesting guest this week. We welcome um, Olga uh, Yukolova, and she is a co-founder and a COO of Pandora, developing uh, second layer solutions for scalable smart contracts with RGB. And uh, yeah, of course, what is RGB? She, uh, she'll gonna um, tell us everything about it. And she also works for the LNPBB uh, Standards Association and mycitadel.io. So very busy, busy woman. woman. Yeah, yeah, indeed. And um, well, uh, I'm uh, We're happy glad that she had some uh, time in her schedule then uh, to, to yeah. post our show, Edward. <laughs> <laughs> if she's so busy, then <laughs> oh, we're uh, here yeah. every week waiting, right? Uh, yeah. <laughs> so come uh, oh, on. Yeah, yeah. I don't, I don't no, even no, leave no. this room only to take a piss <laughs> and then I'm coming back to this room, right? <laughs> yeah, I have your water jerry cans uh, uh, surrounding me. <laughs> and hey, I but, take um, a leak here downstairs. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> uh, <laughs> first, we have to talk a little bit about the statistics, Edward. Ah, and then, yeah, uh, let's do that. About our rings of fire community okay <laughs> let's do it for you guys enjoy the ride <laughs> enjoy All right. Connectează lumea. so last week we had a little over 35.8 bitcoin pushed into the lightning network and this week it's around 36.5 so we added 72 million satoshis nice. with around 1252 members partici participating in over 162 rings well, I see two rings extra with 72 million sets. I bet yeah, we had yeah, a, you're going to tell me a Satoshi's uh, ring. Yeah, yeah. So that's, ah, that is nice. crazy. Yeah. And we're now at block height uh, 742,548. And if we uh, look at the Lightning Network as a whole, uh, there are uh, 16,953 nodes, uh, 40 nodes more, and uh, 3,920 uh, Bitcoin in the network. And the value of today of uh, 1 million Satoshi staff. What's going to take me? 213 dollars, 202 euros and 1425 Chinese won. Nice. Tilt it. Well. And then over to some highlighted news updates from last week. Brought to you by the Daily Moon. Um, uh, the first is a nice one. Uh, Bolt.fun is a community for makers to learn and experiment with Bitcoin and Lightning technology. And they organized uh, Shock the Web and uh, it's a free online quarterly hackathon designed to give makers hands-on experience learning how to build Lightning-enabled web applications. Um, so that means three days long, full of development, interesting uh, discussions, workshops uh hacking with uh, the great help all, uh, of mentors also so that's very interesting if you uh, try to develop something um and there were also some great talks for example uh from anthony pot devin i uh, watched it um from ambos and uh, thunderhub and he talked about uh, for example using your node uh, nodes identity in an anonymous or, or public way uh, while always keeping control of the underlying identity um, which is your node's private key, uh, LN URL authentication it uses. Uh, and uh, to top it all up, um, I had an, uh, well, uh, an afternoon uh, full of uh, presentations also, judging and prizes. And I saw uh, one interesting uh, project, well, a lot more of course, but I will mention one, uh, of Koti Auditore, and you know him, right? He's also in the Ring of Fire, or yeah. I think uh, in in our Connected World community. That's correct. And he built a, um, some kind of crowdfunded, crowdsourced podcast app, and that's why I uh, read it, of course, uh, in which listeners can suggest guests' themes and donate uh, to episodes they want to see happen. So very interactive. Um, yeah, I uh, I like that. Um, uh, tweets from Bosfan over the past few days to recap the highlights. I've added it uh, to the uh, show notes and also the broadcast. It's seven hours and a half uh, full of everything that happened. And of course, also the link to uh, Koti, his uh, project. 
And uh, then Ebex Mercado in Miami. Well, uh, th this is bullish, of course, because they onboarded uh, 85 merchants to the Bitcoin Lightning Network in Miami, Florida. Uh, and the onboarding follows um, a successful large-scale uh, merchant trial uh, Ebex conducted this April at Bitcoin 2022. Uh, they deployed a dedicated customer service team uh, to Miami, which will serve as a model moving forward. So I'm thinking straight away, if we have Bitcoin Amsterdam in October, uh, what will it leave behind? I think it uh, could be very interesting uh, if everybody sees what we're doing here in uh, the Netherlands and in Europe. Uh, maybe we can give it uh, another extra boost. That would be amazing. And in addition, uh, well, eBay, uh, eBay also um, lowers fees uh, than uh, traditional credit card uh, operations uh, traditionally run. So it's, uh, I think, 0.5% uh, instead of uh, 2.5. So giving an extra incentive uh, to businesses. And um, so we want to give also a big shout out to Jose uh, Lim Limus and uh, Mario Gra uh, Gabriel uh, Garcia. Uh, from Ebex Mercado and everyone else involved in this because it's uh, great that uh, these merchants uh, get acquainted uh, with Lightning and Bitcoin. And then uh, to another um, uh, interesting company, Gallery Money, uh, the makers of the Bitcoin Beach wallet showed a screencast um, preview in a tweet of a dollar Lightning transaction without the use of stable coins, they say. So uh, <laughs> yeah, well, we were thinking, how could this be? Is it really true? Um, and I saw also um, something they shared much er earlier. It was a video of Nicholas Berthe of Galloy, uh, in which he shows how uh, users can uh, transact and hold synthetic US dollars over the Lightning Network without uh, being exposed to Bitcoin's uh, price uh, volatility. And this is enabled through hedging on BTC USD derivatives exchange. Uh, exchanges but could also work through a number of different ways well i've added the video and the tweet in the show notes so check it out and um there is one update uh, worth mentioning uh, that was from lnd version 0.15 uh, last week lightning labs uh, labs released it and um, you can try it out if it's um, possible with your um, distribution and do you want to read more and stay up to date about everything related to lightning uh, the news and updates then head over to tdm.news and follow the daily moon on twitter or telegram links are in the show notes check them out Connectează lumea. <laughs> uh, i i want to give the mic to you man <laughs> but uh <laughs> I, I can do you, it also. Yeah, you need to do the quick talk uh, <laughs> because you recorded another yeah, one as well. Uh, I did this myself. No, it was really interesting. Uh, you know Mesh, right? Uh, yeah, I know them. We talked about it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, in episode 28, uh, I also talked about it a little bit in the news section uh, because then uh, we we saw uh, it. Well, it wasn't new, but they um, had some uh, some six million uh, US dollar investment. So it was uh, very interesting to follow. Um, and it still is. And um, not so long ago, I recorded um, a quick talk with Jared Nusinov, the founder of MASH. And he talks about uh, how they're taking value for value even further. So uh, to get more creators to make quality content and gain uh, what it's really worth. Um, MASH wants to create an experience without commitment and the closest to the content creators out there and encouraging to start contributing and causing a positive mind shift. And that's what I found interesting from the old digital mm -hmm. advertising uh, market to social experience. And that's what we're also doing. Uh, full of possibilities, so really ambitious. Um, and uh, well, I have I have here a small uh, bit of the quick talk. And I ask, asked him uh, in, in, in that bit that, um, yeah, what are going to do with those 6 million um, <laughs> and how they see the future of Mesh and in the long run? Because a lot of money and a lot of uh, possibilities, of course. Yeah, yeah. Sure. So let's listen to it. Yeah. Well, last month, uh, MASH successfully ended an investment round and collected $6 million. Uh, what are the plans for the near future of MASH and in the long run? Because you just said uh, some things that were uh, new to me. Um, but of course, you have also uh, a, a long uh, a, a plan for the, for the long run, I think. Um, yeah, what are they? <laughs> so it's uh, build the best team possible to create the best products possible to help 
you know, creators earn their value and consumers have a fully interoperable and uh, amazing experience. Uh, so we're hiring for a few roles um, and we're building out lots of lots of new experiences. That's that's really what the money is for. It's uh, maybe a little bit of marketing. So we'll we'll be at, you know, a few Bitcoin conferences and things like that, uh, which we're excited yeah. to, to, you know, go engage the community um, and just get mash into people's hands and get them to try it and learn how to make it better. Yeah. Yeah, indeed. It's an, a, another option for more adoption. So I think it's uh, it's nice to try and test it out. So uh, I think we should invite him to uh, yeah, Bitcoin Janet Amsterdam, needs to right? Come to, uh, to Amsterdam in October, right? <laughs> in, indeed. And bring the whole team. Uh, well, right. if uh, anyone wants to know more about Mesh, uh, then check it out, uh, listen to the quick talk and uh, the links are of course in show notes. And I was thinking about one thing. Um, I mentioned early that Cody uh, was from the Rings of Fire. He should definitely join, but I think he's not, right? Uh, <laughs> We're still waiting because uh, we, we, yeah, we wanted to do a, a Thunder Games uh, Rings of, a Ring of Fire. Um, and I, yeah, because I everyone was, has a lightning node there. Yeah, but except for Cody uh, or uh. Uh, or she has, she, it, it's, it's a she, right? Or is the he? I don't know. No, oh, I, I'm, I'm not sure. Cat. It's a cat, so... so yeah, but you're, you're the cat man, so... <laughs> yeah, yeah. But, but my cat, cat is a she. The cat needs to spin up uh, the nodes and then we can organize that uh, Ring of Fire, so... Uh, All right. No, I think it's a he, but um, yeah, he w uh, will uh, definitely, we must have him in a, in, in, in a ring with, uh, okay. with all his <laughs> colleagues. He is all right. <laughs> yeah. Le monde. So let's have a look um, at the rings of fire um, at the forecast. Um, I just saw that the 1 million Satoshi's 45th ring and the 3 million Satoshi's 20th ring are full. The polls are full. So we will invite you guys ASAP. And then last week we balanced two rings um, and you said it already in the beginning of the recording, Edward, that <laughs> um, these were uh, pretty big rings because we balanced a 5 million Satoshi's 22nd ring. Uh, Barba found the pace and he wanted to balance the ring as well, but unfortunately we had some gossip issues and somehow he kept getting errors from the script. So we decided to change tactics and pick another ring leader. So it was Stefan um, was the chosen one and he was more lucky with the gossip because he could balance the ring right away. So thanks to both, to Barbara and to um, Stefan for the real teamwork. Uh, within this ring, uh, node operators from USA, uh, Austria, um, Canada, and no, not Holland. Why not Holland? Germany. <laughs> no, Holland is missing no, indeed. somehow. <laughs> I think uh, so 99% nine, of, of, of the times we are, we are also involved, but not this time. Um, and then the second big balls ring, uh, it was yeah. 10 million Satoshi's ninth ring. Uh, you might have noticed that it's a bit quiet in here. Luckily, it's not because the enthusiasm had, has lessened. There were some uh, gossip issues um, and um, uh, more issues which are most likely caused by the Tor DDoS which has been going on. Also, we still need to adjust the changes made in the recent Umbrella updates, which has, which a lot of people are using. So um, that's why it was a bit more uh, quiet than normally. Uh, fortunately, self can't blitz, and you met him at the... Uh, yeah, um, his whole family. Right? His whole yeah. family? Oh, yeah, he brought his whole yeah, family. Yeah, you also told me. Uh, yeah. his uh, daughter, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and his wife, great. But he's yeah. a real go-getter, so we are lucky he was in our ring, ring, ring leader once again. It took a few tries and a lot of waiting to get rid of the disabled true again. But in the end, it all finally worked out. So well done and enjoy your balanced channels, right. guys. And now for the 10 million tenth. <laughs> yeah, let's see oh, nice number, when right? it will yeah. open. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> indeed. So that was that. Uh, thanks, Steph, again. And uh, let's go to the lightning notes. Thanks, Ed. Make sure to secure your home network. So change default passwords and use two-factor authentication where possible. And keep your software up to date. It's also very important. Uh, please keep in mind that the whole Lightning network is very experimental. Uh, software like uh, MyNode, Umbrel, Resi, Blitz, for example, and many others, and L&D also, uh, are still in beta phase. Uh, don't blindly run terminal commands on your node if you don't understand uh, them yourself, and especially when prefixed with sudo. 
Uh, and the last one is also very important. Don't use uh, Satoshis that you're not willing to lose. So if you're not aware uh, of all security considerations, then read into it. Educate yourself, read articles, uh, ask for help in Telegram groups so, uh, with high reputation like ours, and uh, listen to podcasts and learn by doing. Otherwise, don't participate. Also, uh, you can stay uh, informed by uh, following us on Twitter. You can find us at uh, Satoshi Radio ROF and follow our lightning leader, uh, Johnny Kiyashu. Join our Telegram group, Satoshi Radio, Ring of Fire and Connect the World and check our website, satoshi.radio. It would be nice for you uh, to be part of our uh, Emboss community. You can find us there on uh, Satoshi Radio and like and subscribe uh, to our uh, YouTube channel. Use podcasting 2.0 to listen to Connect the World and you can uh, check uh, SAT the trading for the current value. Uh, you can find all this information, of course, also in the show notes as well. All right, let's get on to the show. Conecta el mundo. <laughs> Welcome, Olga. We're excited to have you on our show. Welcome. How, how are you? Hi, thanks for having me here. I'm good, I'm good. Thanks. <laughs> nice. <I did. laughs> We're what also fine. What an interesting uh, question. Um, I, I, I was immediately thinking about the, um, um, the blockchain under control of a, a centralized development team. Uh, for the most, because um, you have a centralized development team, right? <laughs> I said no. I said no more to the blockchain part of it. Okay. Ah, okay. Yeah. That's yeah, yeah, yeah. Even more interesting. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Because of course, uh, uh, yeah. <laughs> it's just uh, usually a lot of things that uh, have been leading directly to the progress of the whole humanity. Yeah. They were done either by one person or a group of people but it was still a tiny yeah. group of people. It has never like huge breakthroughs. They were never ever done by like 50 people or something. There's only yeah, always one, two people that do that. That sounds also, um, well, I, I've, I've read a lot of uh, philosophy books and uh, they're also uh, always saying that it, it takes a small group to, uh, to do the most work uh, the most thinking or the, the, because those are the elected best persons to do it. And then it can, uh, yeah, it can grow to something that we all can use, but I don't, I don't know if, if, if it's the same with this, but maybe. Well, for example, Satoshi <laughs> Nakamoto things. was either one person or a, still a or, small group yeah. of people again, and then the adoption, Indeed. the development of the technology happened, but the first brick, the first yeah. starting point was uh developed there by very small like tense amount of people yeah it's like uh planting a seed and then, exactly uh, there's one seed grow. like yeah. it's not yeah. it's not a field <laughs> it starts with one seed well we all have our own seeds right i mean i can well, we keep uh, it to ourselves Steph. Yeah, come right. on <laughs> <laughs> hey, but you, your background is a, a medical doctor right um yes. but but can you tell us uh, how you switched from a medical uh, side to a more IT side, or what? What are the what, what is the comparison between the two? Uh, long story short, I understood after studying humans, I understood that hacking humans is too easy. This is why I decided to start trying to hack computers, which so far is more fascinating than hacking human. <laughs> but computers are made by by people, by physical people, right? Yeah, and that's the flaw of, of them. All right. <laughs> because basically every like intellect and every design of every computer is narrowed by the size of the brain function of the creator of it. Mm, yeah. It's just the reflection yeah. basically, and that's it. So every code that's written um, is is different because the person who wrote it wrote it. It's, yes, it's, it's, it's kind of like with, with art. It's yeah, kind of yeah, like with yeah, artists. Indeed. Yeah, it's an interesting thought. Yeah, yeah. I, yeah. I, and I like then, uh, what, what do you notice about the Bitcoin and Lightning adoption in your neighborhood in, where, where you live? Have you paid with Satoshis to any merchants or? Are you spending uh, your sets? That's. I am also... spending my sets. I okay. am spending my sets. I'm not. Uh, I'm one of those people who is not throwing around their funds, their money and time and effort. But if I understand that I need to get something that would benefit myself, of course I do spend them. Uh, and I think that uh, just 
sitting on a pile of sets is not really wise, I want to say, because you, what, what are you going to do with them? Uh, we're all mortals. We will die one day and like, we will not be able, like none of us would be able to take them to our grave or whatever. So there's no point in just taking them. Um, so yeah. Uh, and here there are a couple of like official, uh, cafes, restaurants, places that accept Bitcoin, not lightning though, which is a very bad thing for now, but we're working on that. Uh, they do not all of them, but there is a couple of places that accept Bitcoin and I do okay. use Bitcoin from time to time here. Yeah. Nice. I used my, uh, my own note to pay for my beers last night because I was on the Bitcoin meetup in Amsterdam and, um, nice. yeah, it was, it, it's the best feeling there is. And it was even better than the previous ones because now I connected my, to my note mm -hmm. using my VPN. So it was even ah. faster. It was so fast. It, you know, I, I normally use my Apple Pay or something to pay uh, at the supermarket or something, you know. And now, but and normally when I pay with my note using Zeus, um, it's behind Thor, of course, using Tor, and it can be, yeah, they can take some time uh, uh, from a couple of seconds to up to 10, 15 seconds, right? So, but now using my VPN, it was instant. It was like the same feeling I had when I uh, was paying with, uh, when I'm paying with, uh, with my, um, uh, Apple, uh, uh, with my, um, Apple pay at, at, a, at a, um, a supermarket. So yeah, it's was getting it, better Was it better. the like beer ATM, the, the, the one that, uh, I don't remember the teams. There are a couple of teams. No, that no, are no, no, that, no. Right? It, was, it wasn't the ETM. It was, it just what it was at a place, um, where Bitkassa from uh, Gnook, mm -hmm. also one of our previous guests. He, um, yeah, he implemented, um, the payment system there. Yeah. He so onboarded all, a lot of merchants yeah. in, uh, in the yeah, Netherlands. So, so they all had every, um, waiter had a, a iPhone or an iPad with, uh, with Bitkasa on it. And they just ask you, will we have you, do you want to pay on chain or with lightning? And then obviously of everyone, course, goes, everyone goes, everyone goes <laughs> with lightning. Yeah. Um, but mm -hmm. now it was instant. So it was a great, great experience, better experience than I had. So. Yeah, cool. and that's the technical part. Uh, of course, uh, of course, the self sovereignty is uh, is most important, right? Because it's it's your own node. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And um, exactly. um, I've read a lot of tweets uh, that you posted uh, a couple of weeks now about mycitadel.io. Uh, yes. um, yes. What is your role there? Uh, I'm one of the founders of the company, and yeah. I'm one of the founders and main tester. Uh, one of the main yeah. testers of the, of the software. Uh, so yeah, I'm kind of leading it from everything, but programming perspective. Okay. Yeah. I don't do code. Yeah. I can read it. I can test it. I can break it, uh, <laughs> but I cannot write it. Uh, breaking it is also difficult. And yeah, that's my, that's my, that's my passion. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's your passion. All right. <laughs> I'm, I'm, also good at, I'm also good at breaking stuff. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Hey, um, yeah, we have all kinds of questions for you, um, about, uh, Pandora, RGB, lightning, yeah. etc. but it has to be in the 21 minutes. So, uh, yeah, I would really love to enter that part, uh, but only if you guys yes. are ready also. So, uh, are you guys ready? I'm ready. Let's do it. Never, all but right. let's do it. <laughs> Start off with some lightning questions. Uh, Switzerland is known for front running innovations and also the adoption of Bitcoin in certain parts of the economy. Uh, do you think Swiss will be the first European country which adopts Bitcoin as legal tender? And if yes, when? <laughs> when? Um, to be completely honest, I'm not sure about that because while many people think of Switzerland as some sort of like Bitcoin, one of Bitcoin heavens or something, it's not that easy. There are still a lot of regulations here and still uh, products, projects, infrastructure, everything they should comply in one way or another. Uh, as a concept, and also as a concept, it's hard for many people, including merchants, to understand why they need to have Bitcoin, why they need to operate it on a daily basis. Uh, because Switzerland, to be completely honest, is like a huge village. So it's very hard <laughs> yeah. to just go outside and to like a random Joe and explain why he needs to like give me some meat in exchange for Satoshis. It's completely mind blowing for them. <laughs> uh, I'm also not sure about the, how 
Bitcoin becoming the legal tender would increase or decrease Switzerland's value or easy make life life of people easier because it's it will still be followed by a lot of regulations. So yeah. it will still have a lot of drawbacks. It will still have a lot of issues and problems. Um, though, like bad part is over. Uh, <laughs> though I still have some uh, optimistic, probably uh, view on this because taking into account everything that's happening in the, in the world right now, inflation, uh, wars, you know, everything like that. Uh, I think that Switzerland will take this opportunity in order to like take back what was taken, f what was basically stolen for them from them after 9/11, because the banking secrecy they needed, they were forced to give it up, and a lot of other privacy-related stuff, financial finance-related stuff, and from the people that I have been working with and talking to, I can say that there is quite a bit of hope that Switzerland might become one of the first countries to fully adopt uh, Bitcoin and Lightning on like day-to-day -day basis. I don't know when, because <laughs> it's uh, Swiss people in their mentality are very stubborn. They're very... Uh, so they don't like change. Not, not agile. No. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like, we have been having this here and yeah. it, even if it's broken, it must stay here. Yeah, so this it's is also like tradition, the right? It is it is yeah. the, the the soul of a country. So yes, yeah. but uh, probably taking into account that a lot of things have been crushing all over yeah. the place these days. Maybe it yeah. will just get into their brains that probably they should not just to rebel against the change, but to embrace it and become better. Mm -hmm. Maybe also a difference in aging, right? Uh, that uh, younger people uh, think differently about those uh, problems. I don't know. Uh, yeah. Younger people, I would not be sh so sure about that because the educational system in Switzerland is not as good as people think it is. Okay. This is why actually most of the people that I know that are very into Bitcoin privacy, very into self-sovereignty, all these things, they are actually aged like 40 plus. They are okay. not yeah. 20 years old. Well, year like, old. like us. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So they are not not the... I, I, I had high hopes, actually, on youth of Switzerland. Uh, but the, the A, the brightest minds of Switzerland usually are immigrants, which was very exciting for me to, to learn. And B, yes, it's the people that are not like just great, not those that are just graduated from, from the university or mm -hmm. school and mm -hmm. they want to do something. Yeah. And, and we see more and more adoption of Lightning and Bitcoin in developing countries. Uh, but what is needed to have more adoption in other countries, so the more developed countries, uh, where there is more competition with existing fiat systems? Uh, I think first and foremost, it's always... Well, I started... I used to have a very different perspective on this question. But over the past two years after COVID started and everything, I understood that probably the main point here is for people like common people and businesses, small businesses, including and especially small and medium businesses to start, stop being afraid. It's like they need to shift their mindset from, and they need to say no to the existing fiat systems, to the existing taxes systems, to all of the existing systems. They need to just start speaking out that they don't like something. Yeah. This is one of the points where the, all the governments will be basically just forced to change. They will be forced to take some measures. They will be forced to, of course, the first measure they would take is to ban everything. That's the only <laughs> thing they are good at. That's Indeed. the only thing they do. Uh, but if people would not be scared at that point, uh, they yeah. will eventually have the new world built around them in yeah. whatever country actually. And uh, the network, well, is developing very fast, um, but still uh, could develop a lot more faster in, uh, in a more efficient way, perhaps. Uh, what could be a solution to coordinate um, different developers with different ideas, timelines, roadmaps, uh, business models in a, in a more structured way? So more combining forces. Um, I would say probably, again, first and foremost, um, People should abolish a lot of cultural 
uh, or take way, like find ways to somehow work through the cultural differences that they have. Because for example, the woke culture that is everywhere around, the cancel culture that is everywhere around, Unfortunately, and amazingly to myself, I found this being the mo the heaviest obstacle right now for coordination. People do not want to talk to you. They do not want to file PRs or to merge your PRs simply because like sometime back in the day, you tweeted something about blockchain or, or whatever, or because whatever reason, and they found it off offensive or whatever stuff. So of course there should be a couple of coordinating points Pro, like messengers, for example, but private ones, because sometimes there are technical detail, details that you'd not want everyone to know. Um, GitHub and Git system and a lot of interfaces to it. Uh, this is one of the tools that probably everyone should start embracing because a lot of people, they think that I'm not technical. I have no idea how Git works. I am afraid of GitHub. I'm afraid of the like interface because like code and <laughs> they get very much intimidated. Uh, people just need to relax and start doing what they think is right. This is yeah. where I think people, uh, the coordination will get better. And, and with the LNP BP Standards Association, you work to oversee the development of industri industrial standards for Bitcoin and Lightning and to drive adoption for censorship resistant infrastructure. And why is it so important to develop these standards on top of Bitcoin and Lightning development? Um, here, uh, if you look at how the specifications are currently covering, maybe not so much Bitcoin, but uh, Lightning ne Network industry, if we can call it industry, uh, it's 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 a total mess. It's like you can see uh, three different uh, specifications covering the same functionality in different words through different. Like it's it's a total mess. It, it's like you're going into a teenager's room and you see like chaos all over the place. <laughs> it's not good. Um, so and of course people get intimidated and people do not want to even start reading all of that because they do not understand, they cannot connect the dots because here one functionality has been described like three in three different ways, but there is another type of functionality which is never even mentioned anywhere, is like never ever being described. So people cannot even start learning about Lightning or Bitcoin for that matter. They cannot, it's, it's hard for them. Um, so comparable yeah. also to the internet standards like uh the, the development is is the same struggle and the same uh time that uh, is needed to work it together. depends it depends i'm not to, to be completely honest i'm not too deep into knowing how exactly the standardization itself happens in, in the internet world uh except for that it's just pushed upon you from some centralized FBI party. Well, not FBI, but still. <laughs> like, yeah. that, that's all I know, um, almost. Uh, but yeah, we're struggling with that. And what we're doing is A, showing people that first, there is much more functionality to the Lightning Network itself. And this is why we develop the standards in order to show them that it's not only about channels. Lightning is not just about channels. It's not just about messaging. It's not just just the network. It's like a whole different kind of stuff that people can use, people, people can learn about and everything like that. Uh, this, of course, reduces the threshold and people stop being so much afraid of reading through the text, the PRs, the specifications. Uh, and of course, people, uh, if you describe uh, the functionality better, the better you describe it, the more businesses and regular people will start working with that. They will start contributing to that. They will start building solutions on top of it. So I think it's beneficial for all of the parties. Yeah. And my Citadel is a suite of software, hardware, and internet services focuses, uh, focused on digital individual, individual, individual sovereignty and privacy. Uh, my Citadel yeah. wallet, my Citadel contracts and chats. Uh, people have three uh, possibilities to, to run a node. Uh, do they need to run a node to use all the services in the future? Uh, in the future, so people have right now and will have even more possibilities. So first, uh, as a base layer for Bitcoin, like 
for Bitcoin layer. They, people can either use Bitcoin Core right now or they can use our Rust implementation of Bitcoin node. It's yeah. called the BP node. For the Lightning layer, uh, they can use either, uh, for, for now actually, they can use only our LNP node, our Lightning node written in Rust again. We write everything in Rust, basically. <laughs> uh, and even the interface, like the user interface of my Citadel desktop version is written fully in Rust, okay. which was fascinating. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And uh, people, of course, in the future will have uh, an opportunity to run my Citadel node uh, themselves in, in a box, for example, or in a cloud where partnering with the Noddle company, uh, mm -hmm. Noddle guys. Uh, for that, uh, of course, they will have an option to, for example, if you're a good, a huge business, you need to have some trusted third party that would run servers for you. There will be an, an option like that too. So it's very um, dynamic, I want to say, probably. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, if people run Bitcoin Lightning Node at the moment, can they easily add uh, my citadel node or is it uh, really a different thing that i needed to uh, because you said uh, installed in a box uh, so it's pre-installed or something so it will be pre-installed yes yeah. there, there will yeah. be different options uh it ca could be pre-installed you could buy just like a piece of hardware and then install everything yourself it will depend on on the person basically we will give all, all the options uh my citadel node itself is basically a thing that combines in it uh, everything that you need to, uh, everything that you need to be run in order to use RGB, Bitcoin and Lightning protocols and like Storm and Prometheus and other protocols we're doing, because it's in part, it has the, uh, Bitcoin node, BP node that we developed, uh, in it. It has parts of the LNP node inside of it. It has parts of RGB node inside of it. So it's like the, uh, combination of everything. So you do not need to go to five different repositories download three different types of three different nodes, then try to merge them, install them. No, my Citadel, <laughs> my Citadel node would be much easier to handle. Okay, great. Yeah. And, and with Pandora, you're developing the Pandora network, a second layer solution for scalable smart contracts running on top of the Bitcoin network. And with the uh, development of, R of RGB and Spectrum, you're designing a technology for scalable off-chain program programmable uh, digital asset and smart, smart contracts. But how does RGB exactly work? Oh, that's a very so good question. We have time. No, <laughs> that's a long question. Uh, yeah, it, it is a long question. Uh, also, because we have spent like hours, probably like uh, thousands of hours, actually. We have yeah. of uh, presenting. We have a lot of presentations. We have a YouTube channel where. Like, Every video is two hours probably, Definitely. and where we just go down into the, the details of how exactly it works. Because the problem that we face, for example, with RGB is that RGB in like conceptually on conceptual level is very hard to understand because people um, try to grasp the ideas behind it, taking into account, of course, their background. But RGB is different from the blockchain world. Crypto world, it's different from Bitcoin world, and it's different from the Lightning world, and from the side chains. So basically, so they're comparing, and that's that's wrong. Yes, exactly. They are comparing, yeah. and they jump into conclusions which are wrong simply because they 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 think like, okay, so this is how like the Bitcoin works, and this is how like side chain works or liquid works. Yeah. So probably RGB is something like that. It's not something like that, and this is <laughs> this is actually hard to describe. Um, is it comparable on uh, uh, with um, Lightning Labs who is working on Taro as, uh, as, as a smart asset? Smart <laughs> assets. Uh, it 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 is comparable. Well, basically, it's not just comparable. It's uh, I think eighty five percent or something of of it is uh, our work. Okay. So basically the guys just, uh, we actually reached out a couple of times to them and we mm -hmm. offered them to start implementing RGB support into LND. We were denied yeah. many, many times. And actually I think Alex Bosworth was here on your pod podcast a couple of, like some time back. Yeah. yeah and yeah, there was a right. question to him. 
and he denied to answer the question about RGB. And a couple of days uh, after the question, that, and I thought uh, be, because we uh, we weren't talking about RG RGB, so it was interesting. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And then, like a couple of weeks, probably or days after that, uh, Lightning Labs uh, announces that they raised like seventy million or something, and they were. They wrote the specification of of Tarot, um, yeah. so that was not a very good move from their side. But we'll see how okay. that would play out. Uh, <laughs> Tarot Taro is actually, as far from, like from I, my understanding, at least, uh, there is no code right now there. Uh, but according to the specification, it's more of a token protocol. It's not the smart contract system. It's not too much focused on privacy. It's not too much focused on scalability still. And it's the solution that they created in order to basically like kind of build a loop with like around LND because yeah. it will be working only with LND eventually. So yeah, it course. will not be interoperable with uh, other other nodes implementations and everything like that, which I think is not very good for the market, not very good for the common user because people need to have some flexibility. They need to plug and play. They need to uh, use many different softwares on the hardwares. They, they need to have the freedom to choose. And if you're building a very small and tight ecosystem only around what you are doing and taking into account that the amount of time that it takes in order to merge the one PR into L&D repository. It's just, I'm not sure no, whether it's so very good. From a business perspective, yes, it's a good solution because you're basically just wrapping up all the people and you're just putting them inside the box of your solutions. Yeah. But taking into account the Bitcoin spirit, I'm not sure if that's. <laughs> I think it's idea. interesting to follow that uh, we're yeah that's we're only sure. at the beginning I think because um, uh, seeing Lightning as a working capital asset and uh, earning yields very important could be one uh, of the triggers for increasing adoption and uh, in the Netherlands we have a company called Amdex um, and that mainly focuses on asset management uh, of crypto assets for uh, big users and yep. uh, they focus on yield generation for high segments and what possibilities are there for yield generation in the future um, with the use of RGB and will this also be interesting uh, for bigger companies to uh, to use as a working capital asset because that could change uh, the adoption of course. Mm -hmm. uh, back in the day when I was more in blockchain, not Bitcoin community, and even I talked to many, many different people. And right now I met a couple of them and I discovered the sentiment that, yes, they are making a lot of money on block blockchain, crypto, whatever tokens, but all of them want to have to switch to Bitcoin. They want to have the same, like the same stuff. But of course, they face a lot of technical stop showstoppers, like the systems do not scale or the uh, they cannot store their data properly or everything gets leaked or blah, 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 blah. So basically, RGB is there to help and to cover all these problems because everything that... Uh, I'm thankful for Ethereum and blockchain space because they showed like pinpointed all the pains, problems and <laughs> needs of people, yeah. of traders. I heard of, you say uh, that uh, once, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and this is yeah. what, uh, and RGB actually covers all of those situations, but more efficiently, more privately, more scalable. And of course it's on Bitcoin. So every wet dream of any trader that always <laughs> wanted to do the same stuff, but in the normal yeah. way, like to be the true guy, they will be able to do that. So Ethereum <laughs> showed us the market demands and RGB will be the endless, uh, the answer to endless future of uh, use cases. <laughs> it will be great. Kind of oh, like that, yes. Yeah. <laughs> and, and RGB is by design, not a blockchain or peer-to-peer -peer network. Why is no. that for releasing and using RGB, there's no need for updates in core protocol? Uh, no, absolutely no no need to update anything like that because RGB is not uh, is a DAG and basically it uses the concept of uh, single use seals. Like you create, uh, you create. There is a state you issue you issue an asset. This is why you're you're the owner and the asset has a state. And everything that you need to do is basically if you want to transfer it to the other party, you just uh, transfer it. You put the anchor 
basically yeah. I, i'm just trying to make it as easy as possible as fast as possible <laughs> please <laughs> you just <laughs> You basically, you take the asset, uh, you as an owner, you assign the right of the owning right to the second party and you close the seal, you know, like these ba- wristbands that you have mm-hmm. when you mm-hmm. go out yeah. on, 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 on festival. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so you close that over the message, over the stake and you assign it to the other party. And basically this assignment, uh, there's an assignment and it has an anchor. And this anchor only put into Bitcoin, and that's it. In Bitcoin, okay. on Bitcoin yeah. layer, we yeah. do not need to have anything changed. I wanted to ask this one also. You said in a podcast uh, that people were skeptical about the release of RGB because it was taking so long. And you also mentioned that RGB is aiming for both speed and quality and uh, that it's moving fast and efficiently. Can you explain what is still needed to bring the development of RGB further and to uh, yeah to start the releasing? Um, good news is for the gun. Yeah. Uh, we... <laughs> ah, good news. So, yeah. Um, on the 13th of June, we actually yeah. froze the most, one of the most important parts of RGB already. So the concept is that RGB is released and then except for like some minor bug, bugs, it's never changed. Yeah. It will be even more robust than Bitcoin. It will not be something like Lightning Network when you can just play around and do whatever shit you want. Um, so we froze the consensus level, cons- quotes, air quotes, consensus level of it, (laughs) Uh, the RGB, the on-chain part of RGB, which is like RGB layer two without the lightning part, uh, will be released on the 24th, 26th of of, of June, which is like in... This month. All right. Yes, exactly. Nice. (laughs) Yes. Fingers crossed. So we can jump on it, Steph. And then, uh, (laughs) yeah, no, no, that, that makes it really interesting because then a lot of more users can uh, can try it and um yeah we yeah, can we talk have about a, it more we have a roadmap on that too and then we will be adding lightning okay. functionality and rgb Great. overall will be fully released by the end of this year totally yeah all right yeah. right now we just need <laughs> very good rust developers basically that's it and yeah, testers. yeah I, I was thinking about it that uh, if rust is a language uh, that are uh, yeah a lot of developers uh, can handle but uh, yeah, yeah they're, they're, they're... there are a couple of <laughs> memes, there are a couple of memes even that uh, some guys from uh, our community created, like you cannot just file a PR or ask a question to RGB team without knowing Rust and all kinds of stuff like that. <laughs> oh, that sounds great. Yeah. 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 So if you are a Rust uh, Maybe developer we're sharing. and you are, you are uh, searching for work, you uh, can uh, reach out to, to Olga. Yeah. <laughs> yes, please. Or if you're a developer, then uh, read into Rust and uh, make it your own. And um, then perhaps uh, you can uh, yeah, start uh, helping out. Yeah. Um, there is uh, a... Olga, I, we... I, I, yeah. No, no. T- uh, <laughs> I just okay. wanted to warn people that are thinking about switching to Rust from whatever language they have been yeah. using. Uh, Rust is a very big rabbit hole. Like it's very complicated at first. It's very like you do not understand how to tackle it, how to work with it. Like it's mind blowing. But then uh, it's similar to Bitcoin basically. But then there's this threshold (laughs) when you start actually using it. And then like, what the hell? How could I, how could I program in some other languages? What is JavaScript? Like what, what shit is that? And stuff like that. So it's a very, um heavy drug i want to say for programmers so they Once definitely you're there, you uh, never need switch to on. get in contact with you first <laughs> before <Yeah. laughs> um, we had a lot of more questions and we chose uh, uh, the right one th- uh, once i think but um, maybe uh, another time if you uh, would like it then uh, you're most welcome uh, in an- another show so thank uh, you yeah Okay. Very great, great question. Uh, we actually have one question left yeah. <laughs> because last week we had Sergei Tiko Moriov. Tiko Moriov. Yeah, I, I want to pronounce it the right way. Uh, he's a lightning <laughs> postdoctoral researcher at Chaincode Labs, and we asked Sergei to come up with a question for you. So Edward will play the audio file, and then you may answer it. Okay. Sure. Based on the topic we discussed previously, I would ask um, if we develop uh, a vibrant DeFi DEX ecosystem like 
the one that exists on top of this on top of Ethereum based on RGB, Lightning, or other related protocols, and would have a lot of trading activities and trading all types of various tokens on top of Bitcoin or Lightning, would it be a good thing for Bitcoin in general, as envisioned by Satoshi? The envisioned by Satoshi is my favorite part yeah. of the question because M people too. so much, people so much, much like to gamble on what was the vision of this guy, what was the vision of this creator, and blah blah blah. Uh, I think we cannot, we can speculate on that, but we cannot be sure what exactly was envisioned by Satoshi. Uh, what I can say is that Bitcoin ecosystem will benefit from it because uh, I think it was Jaco Mazuka who once said before, like before. I think it was right in somewhere in the middle of us joining the RGB effort and starting building it. Like, if you want to scam people, you can at least do it on Bitcoin, okay? <laughs> so <laughs> it's like, it's like people do have. There are some things that Bitcoin cannot change. It's uh, human nature. People want to gamble. People need to have futures. People need to trade. People need. People are take greedy risks. and take risks yeah. exactly. And if people would start doing that like properly on Bitcoin, having precautions in form of censorship resistance, in form of privacy, because money loves privacy and money is not something and uh, tokens and yields, it's not something that you can wave around as a flag. It's not the proper thing to, to do. And I think that with, the, with RGB, actually this, we can build a new kind of economics all around the world and people would become the builders and the creators of this economic. It will not be uh, one company or one government that would be just issuing the money or issuing tokens or, or doing something in this very centralized way or something. It will be a new era basically for, I hope it will be a new era for the economical and overall technical uh, projects and yeah. progress in the field. And next time, uh, Olga, we have a new guest. His name is Patrick Melder, and he's uh, the founder of Bitcoin Lago in Guatemala, where he's creating a circular Bitcoin e uh, e community. And we want him uh, to uh, answer a question also from you. Uh, do you have a question that we can ask him? Um, yeah, I actually do. Um, taking into account everything that's happening right now in the world, can... Bitcoin and Lightning be a solution for any kinds of problems during the World War III, if it happens. Can it be? Can it not? If it can be the solution, if it can help, then how it can help? That's nice. an interesting one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Curious about, uh, about his answer. All right. Connect the word. Thanks well, again. Thanks, Olga. <laughs> Thank you guys for having me. <laughs> yeah, it, it really was. It was doable. I mean, yeah. again, I'm not that, that technical. and uh, <laughs> <laughs> But I think, yeah, it was doable for me this time. <laughs> All right. <laughs> thanks a lot. I tried. <laughs> where where I can tried. people follow you, Olga? Um, or maybe the, the especially the, the Rust developers that are, that are looking for a new no, job. Of course. Where, yeah. How can people reach you? Where can people follow you on Twitter or something? And for the release uh, of RGB? Uh, for the release of RGB, we have a Telegram channel, of course. We have a Telegram yeah. channel of the LNPVP Standards Association, where we update uh, everyone on the uh, libraries, releases, uh, all the updates, whatever we're doing. Uh, Dev calls, of course, one of the main things is probably for people to get more engaged in the developer calls that we're having. We're having yeah. it uh, bi-weekly, uh, every Wednesday at 5 p.m. Central European time. So whoever is interested, uh, follow me on Twitter, follow the LNPVP Standards Association on Twitter too, because there we constantly announce, and on Telegram, on Telegram groups, we constantly announce all the updates there and all the developer calls. And do not get intimidated in looking into our GitHubs. We have a lot of code, but all of that is very, very nicely document documented. So please, if you are feeling like it, if you're feeling, even if you're feeling like breaking it or finding bugs in it, you're more than welcome. Please go there, read it, uh, contribute, nice. reach out. <laughs>
Great call out. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> great. Well, um, and thanks for listening. And thanks to all members participating in Satoshi Radio Rings of Fire. And of course, thanks uh, to everyone uh, to connect the world with us. If you like our content, please support us in our mission. Visit our website, connecttheworld.live, where you can donate and subscribe and like and share our content on your favorite platform or podcasting 2.0. And we need you to complete our mission, Connect the World. Uh, so keep those notes running, sets flowing and rings burning. And uh, see you all next week with Patrick Melder on the same uh, lighting channel. Auf Wiedersehen, uh, Olga. Ciao, ciao.